Do you, do you want to just have a random conversation and then cut me off the middle of talking and just start saying? Imagine, like, this is the intro. It's just me being it's like, just you being like I, I cannot that could be our thing. do an that intro. Could be our thing. It's just, <laughs> I mean, some do podcasts do start where it's like they're just talking. Yeah. And then they kind no, of. No, but no, there's no podcast that exists where they talk about that they can't do an intro because they're too scared to do the intro and they leave that in. Well, you know what? This is it. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Cinegrade, <laughs> the podcast where we take a film, break it down, and analyze it giving it a score in five different categories of filmmaking, after which we give it its final grade. My name is Chelsea. My name is Elsha. And, um, we're back, y'all. We're back. <laughs> Let's talk about the movie we're doing today. How did you first, do you remember first seeing this movie? Yeah, I was, uh, what grade? It came out in 2010. 2010 that 2010. was like... Grade four? Yeah. I went with my friend's birthday party. Oh, um, nice. I... I knew nothing about it, actually. I don't think I watched, like, any trailers. I think she was just like, hey, you guys want to go see Tangled for my birthday party? And I was like, yeah, sure. Did so you know we it was about Rapunzel? I think so. Tangled. I mean, you see, the, all the posters have long hair. There's no other character that has, like, I guess 70 so. feet of hair. <laughs> oh, you said you didn't see any? Okay, you saw but, like, posters. But, like, you go, yeah, you see posters. I yeah. knew it was about her. But, like, I didn't know anything else really about it. And uh, we went. It was a good time. Cried a little. It was great. <laughs> Cried? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't remember. I mean, I feel like I remember seeing it in theaters. But mm-hmm. I can't really pinpoint, like, an actual time. Like, I mean, I see a lot of movies in theaters. So it's really hard for me to think about that. But I do remember seeing it on a cruise ship. And I remember being like, because I had seen it at that point already, but I was like, this is a good movie. I should revisit this. And I am notorious for, like, becoming obsessed with certain things. Me too. <laughs> and then, like, but it'll always be, like, I, I know what it is. And then I'll be like, that's okay. And then later on in my life, I'll be like, I, I never appreciated this before. Let's, like, actually look at it. And then it's, like, three months of just watching it over and over yeah and, and looking at all the memes and all the like secret lore that pe- the everything that everyone's <laughs> saying about it yeah that's so what happens that's what happened with me with tangled so yeah. this movie i've seen oh my God, not so more than times. any other movie because that's for sure not true but yeah. it is one of the like probably the top five movies i've seen the most I have seen it a lot, yeah. I mean, especially us watching it together. Yeah, we, we watched, watched it, it together a lot. So <laughs> we turn it. It's gotten to the point where, like, we'll turn it on, and if we hear someone coming in the house, we like will turn it off because we're scared that they'll judge us. <laughs> we'll be like, "Oh no, they're coming! Turn it off." That's true. Cause they're gonna come and be like, "You're watching Tangled <laughs> again. again." Yeah, and we'll be like, "Well, it's just one of those movies. It's just, it's just so wholesome." And I mean, like, I don't know why, but. It's got some sort of rewatchability factor. It's interesting. Like, some things just have that kind of, like, rewatchability. Yeah, there's some movies Some stuff that, like, you watch it once and you're like, it was really good. And that's, like, a really interesting thing about movies in general. Is you have all these movies that, like, are very critically acclaimed, but you know you're never going to watch it again in your life. Yeah. And those are, like, usually, like, Oscar bait movies, all those kind of things that I mean, like, you watch it and you'll be like, yeah, that was good. The filmmaking was good. The acting was really good. But, but I, I don't want to rewatch it. But why it. would I watch it again? And then you have movies yeah. that are kind of, like, people say are bad. But you watch them over and over and over because they're entertaining. I think that's kind of the difference between, like, a blockbuster and, like, a critically acclaimed movie. Is that, like, if it's actually, like, a good movie, a lot of the times it's not that enjoyable to watch because usually it's something that's, like, really depressing or, like... Yes, but that's, I don't know. like, a weird <laughs> thing for us in society to be, like, well, it's good, but it's actually not good. Like, we enjoy it, but yeah. because our brains are so tiny, tiny human dumb brain, <laughs> yeah, we totally. like things that aren't actually... They're not meaningful, they don't have any... And I think that's dumb. Yeah. But I don't, but that's, unfortunately, that's the society we live in. Yeah. It's, and it's, I don't think that's necessarily this movie. I don't think people are looking at it like, oh, this movie is, has nothing to say about anything. But it's not, it's not the kind of movie that, that people are going out and saying that this really did anything for anybody. Yeah, it doesn't, like, it doesn't do anything special, really, that's 
hasn't been done before or like that like brings up this well, new con- this new thing in society that I mean like, oh, it, it is kind of a groundbreaking this. movie in some well, spe- oh, we'll get into that yeah. but um yeah so it, it's it's also interesting for how we have to grade these movies because you know how good of a score should we give it because then how objective can you be about it yeah can you be objective about art at all this is the age of question, question. <laughs> and you can be like well i really like the movie i'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 in whatever category but but you'll look at other movies and you'll be like well i guess technically it's not that great well this is why it's our score <laughs> that's true but i do want to have some level of objectability yeah i mean objectability I think is that a word objective ob- object, object- <laughs> I think objectability. You hey, know Siri, what I mean. I don't have Siri. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying <laughs> is, can you be objective about art, and how objective should we be? I think, I don't know, like because we love this movie, yeah, more than the average person, yeah, to the point where, like, if we're picking one Disney princess movie to save, there's a fire. And do you have DVD out, out copies? Of the, out of the Disney vault. Oh, yeah, the Disney vault is <laughs> yeah. literally up in flames. And we can choose one that we can we're go choosing, save a copy of. We're choosing Tangled. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. What is the Disney vault? Side note. I don't know. Is it a legitimate vault? I feel like it is. I mean, because people talk about that there's like these vaults or like this movie has gone into the, the vault. Or and what something. does that mean? You can't find it anywhere? I don't think so because like the movies that go into vaults are just like movies that they say are important or something. I I still I have a running theory that this might just be dumb, and I think I've told you this before. But that it's like it's like a a doomsday bunker of movies where it's like <laughs> if the world ends, all these movies will live on, so that someone like randomly in the future will find all these movies and be like, this is how the world was. Here's Tangled. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean... That's probably not right, though. <laughs> I mean, it'd be amazing. That's just what I imagine when they're, like, the movie's gone into the vault. I thought it was more of a thing where, like, you can only buy it at a limited time, and then after that, it's... You're done So, Like, if you don't have this thing on VHS or DVD, good luck finding it. But now there's, like, streaming services. But that's what I'm saying, is because... And all these movies that are in the vault are like well they're on they're in the they're i mean they're on disney plus in a category called from the vault <laughs> so, so clearly so not what in the vault. is the disney vault <laughs> i have no clue and then i don't know what goes in the vault i don't know if tangled is in the vault i don't know i hope it is if or it's is not, it only like classic disney movies I don't know. I Do they have to be like a certain age? All of, a of this movie could probably be <laughs> solved with a simple Google search. Probably. <laughs> but um, we're not going to do that because we don't have the energy. So if you know what the Disney vault is, <laughs> let <Leave> us know. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment down below. <laughs> or go to our Instagram or Twitter and tell us. Yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, hit us up on Instagram at cine.grade, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. I think that's the handle. Yeah, and on Twitter at Centigrade Podcast, I, I think. <laughs> Should I check? <laughs> Wait, I let can check. I have it actually right here. Oh, okay, perfect. Oh, I lied. It's on Instagram at Centigrade. Got that right? Yeah. Or on Twitter at Centigrade. <laughs> we oh. managed to snag that one. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, so um. Yeah, we're going to do this movie because we love it, yeah. and that's really it. There's no other reason. We could make up some garbage. It's been 10 years since it's been released, so it's an anniversary thing, but it's really just that we enjoy it. Yeah. It's really just that we enjoy it, and it, we have enjoyed it since it came out. And yes. then we rediscover it, and then we love and it. And then we rediscovered it again with the uh, release of Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Um, Being able to watch it anytime you want. <laughs> yeah. Before that, I had to pull out my DVD. Actually, I had a Blu-ray copy. Ooh, and fancy. I had to shove that in the thing, and then I had to take the HDMI out of the Apple TV and plug it into the Blu-ray play. It was a lot of work. For technical. You know, you could say, why don't you have two HDMI cords? Well, I'd have to go buy that. <laughs> <laughs> you 
That's true. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with some fun facts about Ooh, this movie. I like a good fun fact. It is indeed Disney's fiftieth animated film. That's pretty cool. That's I mean I guess you'd think that's a lot of movies, but when you look at the fact that they started in what like 1930 something. Yeah. With Snow something White, like that. something like that. So it's been like a good odd. Uh, 80 years by this point Mm -hmm. so 50 movies in 80 years actually isn't that insane i mean it's like it's a good like they're turning out movies i mean right like now they turn out movies super quickly but like their early days they weren't really that big of a i mean i guess production you also had like the dark ages of disney yeah where like um they weren't putting out as much stuff because i don't know what it was but i know that they had like the original three um the princess movies and then just something happened and then you had like the black cauldron is that what it was called i think yeah something like that and then other things happened and then they kind of just went into like this period where they they weren't making great stuff i think they just didn't the stuff didn't get very popular and then it just got revamped with like the little mermaid yeah and the renaissance and, like, era yeah. when that happened so 50th animated film that's that's pretty good good for them yeah uh so the idea basically started in 1996. Glenn Keane had the idea, pitched it to Michael Eisner, who's the head of Disney in 2001. And um, the, he said it has to be computer animated, which Glenn Keane was like, I don't know about that, because he, I think, was really more into the standard Disney style. CGI, probably. I don't know what it would have looked like at the time. This is also like 2001. Yeah, so what's, like... So you're having stuff, and like I said, I was, I was talking to you about this before, that originally it was announced as being called Rapunzel Unbraided, mm-hmm. and it was a Shrek-like version of the film. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you look at, like, the animation style in Shrek, and that is, it's not really great. Yeah, If you look at the humans in Shrek... Oh, they're terrible. They kind of look like garbage. Yeah. So I think if they had done that, it probably wouldn't have been that great. No. And so that was their original idea was to do like a Shrek type version. Mm-hmm. But that would have been more of like a satire. I still, I just still just can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would be pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we can both say that it's probably a good idea that that didn't happen. Yeah. Um. So... Uh, I think kind of went through a couple of script changes and they were like, oh, I don't know. So they kept putting it off. And then in 2008 gets given to Byron Howard and Nathan Greno, mm-hmm. who end up actually directing the movie. They've been involved in Disney before. I think one of them was an animator on stuff like Brother Bear and I want to say Mulan, but that could be a lie. Don't fact check me. Actually, fact Do. check me. <laughs> um, and then later on, I think it was I think it was Byron Howard who ended up doing Zootopia. Mm-hmm. So he's still going strong. He's making some pretty great movies. Yeah. Uh, this movie spent six years in production, mostly finessing the hair because it was something that was yeah. new that they had to create software for. And it cost $260 million, <laughs> <laughs> making it the most expensive animated movie ever. And I think still. at the time, it was like second most expensive movie ever made. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's sitting at like twelve. Still pretty high though. That's considering true. it's been like ten years. It's I still mean, pretty high. I, yeah, I guess so. I mean, when you look at it, you're kind of like, I can't imagine. Like, I can't believe they got away with it. With it costing. With spending money? that much money yeah. on a movie, and like nobody really blinks an eye. Especially because like the one before it was Princess and the Frog. Am yeah. I right about that. Yeah. And like that movie did okay. Yeah, I don't know if it really did much at the box office. Yeah. But I don't know how much it costs. Yeah, but still, like... But, it, I mean, it makes sense in the fact that this is the first Disney CGI princess movie. Mm-hmm. And I might be... I don't want to say the first CGI Disney movie. You have, like, that happening in Pixar and stuff. Yeah. But th- first, like, it- really movie that looks like this. Yeah. In that sort of atmosphere. Yeah, so they had to... I mean, I understand... I mean, I don't understand how anything costs that much money. But I understand that it could cost more money because of the fact that they had to, like, literally create a software to be able to do it. Well, I think that is why it costs all that yeah. money. But even then, how, how do you spend that much money? <laughs> That's true. 
And like, whoever created the software side note must be rich. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like still up there. It's yeah. like it is still the most expensive animated movie ever made, mm-hmm. and it's like m- mostly miles above any other one. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the next one is like two hundred million. I think was one of the Toy Stories. I or there might that, be like yeah. a bunch of different Pixar movies like that. Again, unless you count the 2019 Lion King as animated, but <laughs> I, I don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> so it cost two hundred and sixty million dollars, but made five hundred and ninety-two. Great. So they made their money back. Uh, spawned a series, and um, yeah. Yeah. One thing that I think was. I, we talked about this before, just in general conversation, but the fact that the name is now Tangled, as before it was Rapunzel, um, <laughs> which they did in an effort to make it more gender neutral. God. <laughs> which is fine. I can understand. Yeah. And I know they said that in the uh, trailers they started to more showcase Eugene, mm-hmm. which we will forever refer to him as Eugene because if not you're ignoring his the character whole development. character <laughs> development all of his arc anyways we'll get into that with his yeah. character but they um they more so put him in a lot of the trailers to make it sort of seem like it's oh it's not a girly movie yeah it has it has this this guy <laughs> <laughs> look at this rugged look man look at this rugged man don't you want to come watch him do his <laughs> antics i don't know i don't know if boys like this movie i don't know maybe it's like the most romantic disney movie i think yeah so if they're not into that i have no idea don't i don't have kids i don't know any kids (laughs) so (laughs) i couldn't tell you but that is why they did it yeah and i know some people had problems with it but I mean, I think that Tangled's a much better name than Rapunzel. I think even the, thinking, like, even taking aside the, the reason that they did it, I just think the name's better. <laughs> I just think in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And it kind of creates a trend. Frozen did it, too. Yeah, it's, it's not the Ice Queen or whatever it was. The Snow Queen. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I mean, that's basically all I have for you for pre-production. Just keep in mind that this movie is wildly expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and that hair... Ain't for nothing. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get into scoring. So uh, we'll go through each category. Each of us will give it a first impression score out of 10. And then we'll discuss why we think it deserves that score. And at the end of the round, we can either change our score or state our initial score. We'll then have a score out of 20 for each round, adding each of the five categories to give us a score out of 100. The film will then have a chance to earn up to three bonus points in the bonus best round. So... Let's start off with round one, story score, judging based on writing and plot. What nice. do you think? Writing, I will start off with an eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I started with an eight. Okay. Um, it's a straightforward movie. Mm-hmm. There's nothing really happening that's too sort of crazy in the plot. I think maybe in the character dynamics you have that happening more, but in the actual writing, it kind of just goes from one scene to the next, and there's nothing too insane happening. Yeah. There's no, like, big twists. All the twists that happens are more, like, the characters don't know what happens, but, like, the, um, the audience is always in on what's going on. Yeah. And I think that that is good. I think it, it gives it a nice flow and doesn't make the movie feel too long. Yeah, that's it's that's a part of the movie that I think really shines is that it just flows really well. The scenes meld together really well and you just it doesn't seem like a long movie. It just it's it's a very complete storyline mm-hmm. that doesn't like branch off to weird side points or like anything like that. It just is it knows what it's doing mm-hmm. and it sticks on that track and it just completes it really well. Again, I'm going to compare it and do the thing. Do the th- <laughs> You're going to do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Where we talk about a lot, uh, this movie often gets compared to Frozen. Yeah. Because, it's... I think mostly because because they do look very similar. They look pretty much the same. And I think that the thing is that because Frozen was such a big deal, it's just a little bit aggravating to Tangled fans <laughs> that, that Tangled didn't get the same kind of love. And yeah. And it still doesn't. I mean, people still, like, 
like praise Frozen, mm-hmm. and then, and they're like, oh yeah, Tangled's fine. And like, this isn't me saying that Frozen is a bad movie. No, the, we'll we'll put we like Frozen. Yeah, but we. It's just, just we like Tangled a lot more. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if we're we're not gonna talk about Frozen too, but no, but um, we don't speak about that. If one day we get into that movie, we can talk about all the problems that that has. But it is just the best sounding board for me to go off on for like a comparison between the two movies in a in like a a plot way. Yeah. It's because I think Frozen is probably a movie that you can look into and find deeper meanings. But it has so many extra elements in it that I'm just like I don't. There's so many scenes in Frozen that I forget exist (laughs) and it's for good reason because then they happen and I'm like why (laughs) and I think the thing about Tangled is that it doesn't have anything unnecessary in it whereas in like something like Frozen you have I think the fixer upper yeah the The songs are one thing yeah but you have like just extra things that I just feel like you wouldn't need in this movie you don't really need a lot I was gonna say that like he's in 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 an essence um a useless character. Yeah. He doesn't and really do anything. So he when just we talks. get into the point where we're like, we're meeting him and we have to listen to his song. I'm like, maybe this is funny for kids. But I just, well, I have a problem when people think that like, oh, we need to put in one thing for kids. Yeah, because kids are smarter than people think. I think That's a lot true. Of the time. Like, they don't need, I mean, and maybe there are people who love Olaf. There are people who love Olaf. I personally don't really find Olaf funny, like, at all. Yeah. Like, beside, like, one line, maybe, I'll be like, oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> but other than that, I'm, ju- I'm just, like, it's kind of annoying. Yeah, so when you have too many things happening and too many extra parts that aren't necessary, it almost makes the story feel like it doesn't, it's not moving as quickly and it's almost like, I don't know if I'm in on this. I don't know if I want to watch this part. There's yeah. no, like, skippable parts for me. In yeah, Tangled. there's definitely, like, if I randomly am putting on a movie or something, and I'm I'm not really paying attention to it, there's definitely parts will be like, oh, I don't need to pay attention to this. I can go do something and come back or something, because mm-hmm. I don't care about this part, and it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But definitely whenever we watch Tangled, like... There's not a part where I'm like, oh, I can go. I want to go get something. Mm -hmm. Because every scene has something in it where you're like, this is just. Yeah, they're all pretty much. It's so charming or. Yeah, or they're all like pretty much important to either the story or like the character in their development. Yeah, there's so many small nuances with like the characters and what happens within the story. that It just works with the story really well. Mm -hmm. And so you have. I mean, a a pretty well-defined plot. We know what Rapunzel wants. We know what her goal is. We know what they're doing. It all makes sense. It could be deeper. It could be deeper. It could have more elements that are um, just kind of more inventive. But it doesn't need to do that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like, people could say, like, oh, it could be more original. It's, it's a very cookie cutter kind of like plot Mm -hmm. which that is true it's not like a crazy new way of making a movie or anything Mm -hmm. or having a plot but it also does it does what it does very well yeah like they kind of leaned into the fact that they're like this is what's gonna happen and they just kind of went with it and they didn't try to add anything else to make it special it just kind of they took what they want the plot to be and they just went with it and it's just, yeah. I don't know, it just works. And it's not, like, really afraid to, like, the whole, I mean, we're going to spoil the movie. You should probably have seen it. If yeah, you're if you haven't to seen Tangled, um, go see it. But, like, he, you know, his death. Yeah. They're not afraid to go there. No. They're not, you know, it's just, like, the first movie that was rated PG for Disney mm-hmm. because of the stabbing thing. Yeah. And so I think maybe all that falls more into character. But they're they're not... I mean, I guess it would have been more ballsy for them to actually <laughs> keep him killed. Well, yeah. Which would be interesting. Yeah. Um, but then you, who knows where it would go from there. Yeah. So I think that's the thing I appreciate most about it. It's just that it's, it, it doesn't do anything more than it needs to do. Mm. Um, 
and as an as like a result of that it's not it doesn't annoy me yeah i agree with that Mm -hmm. and i guess there's the whole thing about like uh feminism in these kind of movies oh yeah uh they kind of i mean i guess it's not in a case of like he has to come save her i mean he does have to do that but they kind of save each other in a way like he comes to save her but she's already kind of i don't have a problem with him coming to save her yeah because i feel like it works well in his character development and that's something we could talk about in character because i mean it's in his character development to have like changed his ways and then by that doing that yeah going to save her that's what i was so yeah. like it doesn't I don't really see it as, oh, it's it's a man going to save a woman. But it's then, more of, like, this character has changed, and in that act, he's going to help someone. Yeah. So, does she need to be... And maybe sometimes you just need help. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you need to get help. I mean, I just... <laughs> there's always this whole thing about the damsel in distress. But she always, sort of, throughout the whole thing, shows herself to be pretty sort of self she's pretty capable yeah i mean like she like fights like pretty much after she gets out of the like in the tavern and yeah then, like, in the what the heck's it the dam area she's fighting so i think that's something i appreciate is the fact that they're not like well oh i don't need anyone to come save me but more of a like um sometimes you need that sometimes that's that's an important thing yeah. there's nothing really wrong with it no i don't think there is and as long as they don't do it in, like, a, a patronizing way. I feel like because of the fact that earlier in the movie, it establishes that she can handle herself. Yeah. And they make that a point that it's not, like, at the end. It's not, like, it's showing her through the whole movie being like, I can't do anything. I need someone. Yeah. <laughs> she does a lot of stuff by herself the entire movie. And then it's just at the end, she needs a bit of extra help. Mm-hmm. She's getting kidnapped again, man. Eh? <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's okay. Yeah. So, do, do you want to end it off there? Yeah, I think that's good. All right, so what's your final score? I'll keep it at, uh... I'll give it an 8. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll keep it at an 8, too. Mostly just because it doesn't do anything too crazy, but it doesn't annoy me. hmm And that's an important thing. You can think, you know, well, it needs to take risks, but I'm saying, you know, if it, do- if it doesn't... It doesn't, doesn't really need to take risks. Sometimes risks really don't pay off, and they just our huge detriment to the movie yeah, sometimes <laughs> it just, you just doesn't work sometimes you can focus and i think because i enjoy the characters that it, it's better than it needing to have any sort of twist or like oh that's another thing about frozen the twist dumb yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's garbage i yeah. think twists usually tend to to just they're like i don't know if i saw it coming but it's so thing is it's a twist where like People are like, oh, it's good. I didn't see it coming. Which I don't remember if I saw it coming or not. Or if I was, like, blown away by it. I don't remember. But a ton of people say that they're like, oh, it's a great twist. But the thing is, if you look at the character, he shows no signs of doing that the whole time. And I feel like for it to be a good twist, you have to have seen something beforehand. Yeah. That even hints it. If you rewatch that movie and you just pay attention to Hans, yeah. it makes no sense. <laughs> and he is, like, in sense of villain... But, like, has nothing to do with the conflict of the movie until the very end. He also, like, the, his, his, like, entire way of handling it at the end makes no sense. And it wouldn't actually make him be the, like, ruler of Arendelle or whatever. But that's beside the so point. So, anyways, that's, that's a talk the for point of that Frozen, is me but... saying, like, okay, you can say this is a deep movie that's complex and has all these writing things. But, 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 but Why? It yeah. doesn't actually do anything to serve your story. There's too many villains in that movie. I mean, and also the villain, at the beginning, you're you're saying is Elsa. But, yeah. like, she doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, like, it's Elsa, she and then it's Hans, away. and then it's the Duke of Weasel, whatever. <laughs> and then it's, like, what are we doing here? I and then know. you have freaking... <laughs> You have Olaf, and then you have the trolls, and you have Kristoff being essentially useless. Actually, no. He's useful in that movie, useless in Frozen 2. Yeah. And it's like, there's too many characters. There's, there's a lot too of much writing happening here in a way that, that just is too much. So, so that's You're trying what. to do too much at the same time when you could just focus on... On, like, one thing and really make that shine. So, yeah. that's what I'm saying about Tangled, is that it, it doesn't... 
It doesn't try to do too much. It doesn't have anything to prove to anybody. Yeah, exactly. It knows its worth. Yeah. So, uh, yep, we'll cap it off there. That's an 8 and an 8, giving us a 16 out of 20 in that round. Uh, okay, going into round 2, character count, judging based on character development and relationships. What are your thoughts? I think the characters and the relationships in this movie are really solid. Mm-hmm. I think that, I don't know. I mean, we'll get into it I think once we start talking about it, but off the bat, I think that they're pretty strong. Yeah, I think this movie really, its biggest benefit is its relationships. Definitely. And the sort of intertwinings of the characters in said relationships, it's really based a lot off of how they interact with each other and how they learn from that. Especially when you take into consideration that Rapunzel is someone who has essentially been on her own her whole life and her only relationship is this one very toxic one. Yeah, I think it... And her relationship with Pascal, but he doesn't talk. (laughs) He doesn't talk, so... Yeah, I think off the bat... I'll give it a nine. Okay. I gave it an eight. Okay. But I'm open to to conversation about it. Yeah. So I think we should go one by one with these. We'll start off yeah. with Rapunzel because she's our protagonist. Okay. You all have that very classic I want song that all the Disney princesses have in their movies. Mm-hmm. So you start off with One Will My Life Begin. And you get a good clear sense of what she does every day. Which um, is the same... Which is really just doing the same things. It's sort of a... People joke now about her being like the quarantine queen. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which is also ironic because it's the kingdom of Corona. Corona. But, uh... And so you get the sense of she is this person who is stuck in this one place and really wants to explore the world. And her goal isn't necessarily to be free. She doesn't say that she wants to leave and never come back her goal is just to see the lights she just wants to have a nice day looking at the lights that's it yeah and so it's sort of you already get the sense of like her goal should be bigger she should want to leave but she's more so held back by her relationship with her mother air quotes yeah so i think that's an interesting sort of starting point for her to go off of it is interesting to have it start out with with it she's still really oblivious to what's happening like it doesn't start Mm -hmm. out and then she immediately realizes that she needs to like leave this relationship or something or like yeah she's get out she starts out and she's just like i just want to ask something and we can go do something that's it (laughs) yeah she's like i i think it's good that they don't make it that she wants too much because or else you're wondering how would she know that she wants that because she doesn't know about anything else that exists no. But there is a part of her deep down that that does kind of want that. She at least wants to see those lights. And it's more so later on that she realizes she wants to experience more. But the lights are just kind of like a... But that's her dream. Yeah. And that brings in the central uh, theme of the movie, which is dreams. It's a good theme. Which is <laughs> kind of Disney's. <laughs> yeah. Disney's brand. I think she's... Uh, she's fun. She's cute. She's really cute. She's really likable. Yeah. She she's very she has this sort of blank slate innocence. She doesn't see other people as being her mother tells her that everyone is essentially bad, and I think to a certain extent she kind of believes it. But when you get to the point where they go into the tavern, the snuggly duckling or whatever. Mm-hmm. She is, like, the one person who... She's kind of afraid, but after a while, she's like, nah. Yeah, I mean, when she, like, first meets everybody, she's, like, kind of... Like, she's scared. Yeah. But then she just is like, actually, this... But she doesn't really have any judgments about people. No. Which I think is interesting, considering that she's never met anyone, really. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) So, yeah. I just think she's a very interesting character. And she is very much capable of handling herself. Yeah. She's very strong. You get... Got mad by his <laughs> You get her kind of... Uh, she, she can take care of herself. Mm-hmm. Especially in the, the, the dam scene where she kind of just takes charge and goes. And then at the end. The end <laughs> of their mother when she, like, grabs her ha- arm and tells her, like, no, I'm leaving. You're wrong. So. It's good. And so you have the central kind of conflict of the movie being her relationship with Mother Gothel, who 
is i think to me like top tier disney villain i agree with that i just she's so interesting i think because of the fact that she's like just a normal person like she doesn't yeah, have any powers any superpowers or whatever she's not i don't know she's very manipulative yeah which is kind of just a, a i mean you could say that that's her like air quote superpowers that she's just very manipulative and and i think it's like just a different dynamic from other uh, like of these disney princess movies because your villain is someone that the main character doesn't know is the villain yeah it's a villain that the main character loves yeah really and so you get this like you have a relationship between the protagonist and your villain that she she's kind of it makes her feel very guilty so all yeah. of your like conflict is a lot more interesting because it's not an external thing yeah it's not her just acting out and being like Mm -hmm. i want to leave it's this person i've had a relationship with all my life this is the only relationship i've ever had my entire life Mm -hmm. and i'm going against it how does that affect me do i want to do this and i think uh you know you can have that sort of idea of people relating to it if they do have people in their lives who are like that who are sort of manipulative hopefully not that manipulative but yeah (laughs) i I mean it might be an extreme yeah it might be an exaggeration but especially as like a parental figure and so you sort of see the ways in which that can affect a child and i mean rapunzel i don't think is as affected as you'd think like she's not extremely insecure but you do have so many instances of Gothel telling her like oh getting chubby (laughs) (laughs) you uh uh why would he ever love you look at this hair she didn't say that but (laughs) (laughs) but she does grab her hair and then say look at you come on now really (laughs) do you think he's impressed and so it's like it's just an interesting sort of dynamic where it's not so much of like a, um, I am a villain and I'm going to use my powers against you because I want to, I don't know how to explain it. I think, I like understand who what you're saying I'm though, trying like to like think of who would be most comparative to, to her. Gothel. A part of me feels like it's, uh, hmm. I was going to say Scar. <laughs> 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 but that's only because I don't think that, that, that... Simba knows that Scar is the villain really. He thinks it's himself. Yeah. But anyways, my point is that it, it's just more of an interesting dynamic. I agree with that. And I think her character design also is supposed to be, they said she's supposed to be sort of like opposite of Rapunzel. So her dress is more, it's set more in the time that she's actually from. I don't know when, how old she's supposed to be. Like, old. Like I like, mean, she's old enough that when she stops getting the power, she, like, withers and dies. Yeah, I think it's so, supposed to be, like, a thousand or something. Yeah. Maybe that's, maybe that's that wrong, might. but something like that. Yeah. So, and she wears very dark colors, contrasted to Rapunzel's light purple-pink thing, mm-hmm. blonde hair. She has very frizzy black hair. Uh, she's quite tall. I think the character designs are really interesting. I think they just... Yeah. They, so, they like, compliment, but don't at the same time very well <laughs> yeah it's kind of his contrast yeah and that relationship is kind of what's driving the whole thing mm-hmm. and then the other relationship that drives it is her relationship with eugene yes. who um <laughs> we have a, an affinity for because he's absolutely beautiful because he's <laughs> the greatest man <laughs> and like we said before we call him eugene because if you call him flynn rider you're kind of disregarding his whole uh character development yeah, because he ends the movie being like, I, I'm not Flynn anymore. Yeah. I've, I've accepted myself as a person. Because Flynn Rider is basically his sort of... Uh, Alter ego? Not well, really, no, it's but like... This, like but it's like a moniker like that he uses that's supposed to express a person that he's not. Yeah. That and he, it's, it's like him. It's who he wants to be, but it's not but actually not who really. he is. Yeah. And well, and also at the end of the movie, no one calls him Flynn. <laughs> yeah, because people hear the name Eugene Fitzherbert and they're like, "This is this 
an ugly name, which is, first of all, offensive to anyone named Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> It's not that bad of a name. I mean, I'll admit that, like, at first that it's kind of jarring. But it's, I feel like it's only jarring because Flynn's kind of a cool name. Flynn Rider's a cool name. Flynn Rider's a cool <laughs> ass name. So that if you take Eugene, it's not that bad of a name, but compared to Flynn, it's kind of lame. And I think it actually but suits him. But it's not really. And, I mean, we've talked about the series before. It definitely suits him more in the series. Yeah. And um, maybe we'll talk more about the series when we get to the fifth category but Mm -hmm. um i think he that like the whole name thing is important to who he is i mean definitely i mean that's his whole arc is yeah becoming himself pretty much yeah so the fact that it kind of bothers me that zachary levi doesn't (laughs) use the name eugene and he's more into calling him flynn but we can excuse it because we love zachary Zachary levi's great and so you have the character design of eugene being um absolutely gorgeous which is a good time to bring up the hot man meeting oh my favorite fact (laughs) (laughs) so they decided when they were making the movie that they were like this is going to be the most beautiful uh disney prince ever ever i don't know why they decided that maybe because they were like we're doing this cgi yeah it'll look more realistic we can make them look real good (laughs) i don't know maybe and it's interesting to think in this way of like saying, oh, he has to be really hot. And again, wondering if that's a problematic thing. I don't know. I because, don't <laughs> because if it was the other way around and you're like, we're going to make the hottest Disney princess ever. We might be like, hmm. <laughs> but I mean, people have been objectifying women in film for ever so, so we're allowed to objectify <laughs> it's not really objectifying no, it's him not. it's more so making him attractive in a way that is enticing to her but also that that shows that he is sort of this guy who's like who uses that as a way to sort of be he's kind of arrogant in a way he's arrogant but in like a really charming way <laughs> yeah so it kind of works towards his arc i mean it's also interesting because like a lot of like attractive guys in movies are like don't don't really have that much of a personality. <laughs> That's true. So and they like they and so they took a character and they were like we're going to make him the hottest m- man in any Disney movie. But they gave him a pretty great personality. I mean it yeah. shines through especially in the series which again we'll maybe touch on a bit later, but like his personality is pretty great. He's really sweet. <laughs> And, like, I don't know. It's just interesting that it, he's he's beautiful, but, like, they don't really focus on that very much. Yeah. It's more, like, how he acts and who he is as a person that it really attracts, that she's yeah. really attracted to. So. so, I mean, and I guess, again, they do probably make all of the women in these movies really beautiful. I mean, yeah, and a lot so of them look the same. <laughs> why not just do that with the men? And I don't think that they don't do that with any of the other guys. Like, if we think about the least attractive Disney prince, it's probably, like, Kristoff. Yeah. And, and he's fine. He's just, I mean, he's he's fine. He's just, like, I don't know. I mean, does it matter? Not really. No. But we appreciate Eugene. Yeah, we do. Anyways, the hot man meeting was the fact that they are like, hey, he's got to be the hottest... Uh, Disney print so we're gonna have a meeting and we're gonna invite everyone at Disney (laughs) or whoever's there during the day Uh, they're all gonna come here and they're all gonna tell us what they find attractive in a man so they had pictures of celebrities pictures of previous Disney princes and they sort of picked out elements that they liked in order to make them yeah Yeah, and it's uh, worked pretty well I think it did work pretty well I think Eugene has the type of hair that I really enjoy on I, I guys. Same. <laughs> Long hair is um it's tricky. Yeah. Because if you wear it wrong, then it can make you look kind of gross. Yeah. But it works really well. But There's yeah, nice like, swoops. And like a but like a dark brown hair. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's like the hair color. That's your hair color. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's the hair color I I look I look for. Yeah, like a fluffy dark brown, mm-hmm. like a like a like a Paul McCartney dark brown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, they took all these elements of these guys and they made this. They made Eugene, and it was. It's interesting because the original character design of him was um, kind of bigger and more cutesy, mm-hmm. kind of sort of like Kristoff. His original name was, I think, it was Bastion. And they, they, he was supposed to be. I don't know what he was supposed to be, but he wasn't supposed to be a thief. And eventually, they sort of decided, yeah, we'll make him kind of like a criminal, which is interesting in his arc. Yeah, it's and interesting. And does make sense. Yeah. And I makes sense in the in the in the the uh, idea of her like having being led to believe that there's all these criminals and ruffians and thugs who are out to kill her. Yeah, because I mean, her mom's like saying like oh there's so many terrible people and i mean the first people that she meets are these people that she was talking that's about true. it's just they're not actually like that yeah i mean and apart from him being absolutely beautiful yeah you do have this arc of him going from being someone who only cares about himself and money mm-hmm. to find to finding love yeah. it's really quite sweet it is and i was thinking about the other day his sort of ending and the the death that he does. Mm-hmm. The death that he does. <laughs> the death that he indeed does have to do. A die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was reading a question on Quora. Oh no. Because <laughs> my new hobby is answering questions on Quora. And by answering questions you mean either answering them or getting into fights. Oh yeah. I get in lots of into lots of fights with people on Quora. And I always win. <laughs> <laughs> But um, the question was, and I mean, I've heard it before, like, why doesn't Rapunzel cut her own hair? I just don't understand. Because people think that that would be a good thing for her to be, again, this, like, independent woman thing. I cut my own hair because I am going to be the one to free myself. Mm -hmm. Or it was also, like, it's either that or, actually, I think the real question was, why doesn't he wait to cut her hair until after she saves him? Yeah. But I think the point is, I mean, you can do the logical well. If he waits, she could get yanked away. Yeah. But the actual thing is that if he doesn't die, then his arc isn't complete. Yeah, I mean, the whole, like... Because if he doesn't have that self-sacrifice, you don't get the sense of that he's changed. Yeah, I think I think the death really works in the story. Like, I understand that people could maybe be like, wait, like... Like, there's a plot hole, blah, 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 I don't know. But I think it works. I don't know. I don't know. If, I mean, if you're talking about plot holes, a bigger plot hole would be the whole birthday thing. Yeah, why didn't she, why change, didn't she her change her birthday? Even by a day. <laughs> I mean, like, she could have waited, and he could have cut her hair after. Um, But, like, like I'm saying is, like, no, his character, if he does that, if you take into, and this is going back to writing, Say he doesn't cut her hair, or mm. he waits. It's like you don't have any final scene then. You don't, and also like the whole point of his arc is to prove that he's not like that. Anymore. Yeah, it's supposed to be like if his original so, goal is to have an island alone with money. Yeah. Then at the end, he's willing to die for someone who he just met. And you could take this as being, like, the uh, sort of, like, anti-Frozen type thing that they're doing <laughs> with the marrying a man you just met. They don't get married. No. But they've essentially fallen in love in, like, less than 24 hours, we assume. They never say, I love you. But. It's true. He does die for her. Yeah. But I guess, in a sense, he probably doesn't have anyone else to live for. <laughs> true (laughs) why not die for her the only thing the other thing about the whole like he should have waited and until after he was healed Mm -hmm. that also is super selfish though because then he's saying okay heal me first and then i'll save you (laughs) yeah like the point is that that completely takes away his entire arc which is that he's not selfish anymore it's like he needs to have that he even says like no you can't save me if you do this you'll die yeah so him taking that on completes his arc, kills the villain, and then you get the sad part of her feeling like it's her fault, and then she saves him. Yeah, I think I think it makes sense the way that it happens. Because her arc is essentially kind of completed already when she says, like, um, 
uh, you were wrong about the world and you were wrong about me Mm -hmm. and i'll never let you use my hair again that is the end of her arc yeah that's the end of her arc and then he comes in and has to complete his arc which is pretty much that he has he his arc it, to complete his arc he has to save her and to do that in that moment is to cut her hair <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so he has to die and it's yeah. also a matter of him sort of saying i don't care about your hair yeah. whereas mother gothel's whole thing is that you have the people wh- will want to steal her hair yeah but also like she you have throughout the whole movie those el- those like little moments where she will like she calls her flower or she kisses her hair or she like is always in a, in a way talking about her love towards her in regards to the hair because you get that she loves really all that she actually cares about is the hair yeah so eugene sort of cutting it and not caring about it it's saying i don't love you for your hair i love you <laughs> yeah and yeah. he does have other parts in, this, in the movie where he kind of pushes her hair out of her face very cute yeah <laughs> so you have a lot of like those little elements going on that are that are quite nice and subtle mm-hmm. yeah that his arc is good and that's an important part of the story yeah it is and uh anyone who goes more than he wait doesn't understand about writing <laughs> <laughs> you have that happening all the time yeah and people saying well why doesn't this happen it's like because that wouldn't make any sense because if that happened we wouldn't be able to finish the story so those are the relationships that she really have is Rapunzel's relationship with her mother contrasted to her relationship with Eugene. It's a nice dynamic. It is. It, it kind of goes well that there's not too many characters in the movie. There's a lot of side characters, but they don't actually like affect anything too much. A lot of the movie is kind of them going on their journey and learning about each other. And like on the same point of like the side characters, they don't do much, but they also like don't spend too much time doing much (laughs) what (laughs) that was making sense like they don't do that much to like to the greater story but they're not in the movie a lot yeah so it doesn't like stray the story to like to talk about them a lot they're (laughs) there and they're fun and they work but they don't like take away from the story and if we talk about side characters i mean you have pascal and max who i think are important because or aren't annoying because they don't talk. Yeah. There's not they don't distract too much and they don't I mean again, going back to Frozen, Olaf is too much too much of a side character because he has too many dumb lines. Too many random And then things Sven to talk is about. useless. <laughs> yeah, Sven doesn't do anything. Sven is basically Kristoff. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> because he just talks for him. But like that's the point, is like your side character when they're not like he has a lot of expressions that are important and you get the sense that he is the one sort of friend that Rapunzel has but also by him not being too big of a part of it you get more of the sense that she is still kind of lonely yeah I think it makes sense that I like that they're there and then Max is kind of like a not really a buddy I don't even know how to explain it he kind of just drives the plot but also it's like I mean, Max kind of drives Eugene to her, kind of. That's he hides, true. and then finds her. Yeah, because he was it hiding went for, for Max. Max. So you kind of need Max. <laughs> and he also goes to save him in the end. Yeah. Uh, other side characters we have uh, the pub thugs, mm-hmm. who their main goal I think is just to make, to to give the sense that like not everyone's garbage. They have greater goals than what people think and they just want people to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and also Rapunzel doesn't see them as like the garbage of society. Yeah, she sees them as normal people. Yeah. Who have dreams. <laughs> so that Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just to show you everyone has a dream. Yeah. So they're kind of important. They're not too important, but they're also not there for too much. No. They're also the ones who break them out of jail. So they have a dual purpose. And then the Stabbington brothers. I love their name. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's so funny. Stabbington Brothers. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> Who are, are their main purpose is to show A that Eugene is kind of like a do it like he's gonna do everything himself, doesn't care about anyone else, will use people. I mean it also shows what he used to be like. That's because true. he used to like be with those people. Mm-hmm. So it kind of does a dual purpose of that also yeah and then also kind of they get used by mother goth a little bit mm-hmm. 
I think that's it for side characters, unless you want to count her parents. But it they don't do anything. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. They never talk. Which is, again, I'm saying, like, they don't do anything that they don't need to do. Like, they could have hired voice actors, but also, they didn't really need to say anything. Yeah. Because it's not about the parents being sad. It's about her getting back. To, yeah. Like, it's about her finding her, de- like, finding her home. Yeah. And her family. Mm-hmm. It's not about the parents finding her. So you don't really need them. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Do you want to... Is that, do you want to cap it off there? Yeah, I think we can stop there. Okay, so what do you want to give it for a final score? I said nine initially, right? You said eight initially? Yeah. Um, I think I'll go 8.5. I was going to change it to an 8.5 yeah. too. Just because they're not like crazy deep characters. No, and I but mean I we are giving it an 85%, but I think it's more so like all of the good stuff in the movie comes from the character arcs and the relationships. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go two eight point fives. Yeah, so it's a God math. Seventeen? <laughs> yeah. Seventeen out of twenty. <laughs> oh we love math. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to round three visual volume, judging based on cinematography, production design, and any other visual elements. This, I mean, in this category, you have to talk about the, uh, the hair, I think, kind of. Oh, yeah. Um, and the hair is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, they spent, like, however many millions of dollars on Creating it. it. Um, but even, ju- even if we're not talking about the hair, I think the, like, environments in this movie yeah. are really pretty. Like, they're so colorful and, like, they stand out. They're... It is a very pleasing sort of... It's really nice to look at. Yeah. It's you look, I mean, again, lantern scene. My oh, God. yeah. The lantern scene. And we'll it's talk more about that. It's uh, iconic. It's it's just really great. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the visuals are pretty strong in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give it a 9 initially. I had 8.5. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty close. Yeah, I think the colors... Mm-hmm. We have a lot of things going on with, like, greens and, like, purples, I think. I mean, her dress is purple. Blues and greens. There's just a lot of... It's, like, earthy. None of them... It's it's earthy, but none of them are muted. Yeah, it's kind of poppy. Yeah, everything pops, but nothing gets, like, hidden. Yeah. I don't know. And they said that they wanted it to look like a Renaissance painting. Mm -hmm. Like, what would their... uh, Oh, what was it called? Like the swing. Yeah. That was like their sort of um, inspiration for it. Yeah, I think the colors are really good and the backgrounds are pretty. I think like CGI makes it. It's like were we talking about how it was like realistic, but not too much. Yeah, like, I mean, everything looks like it could be an actual thing, and like mm-hmm. it could be in reality, but there's something about it. Probably because it's so colorful mm-hmm. that you, you it grounds it so that it looks like it could be real, but it also has something about it that y- you know that it's fantasy mm-hmm. and that it's it's whimsical and and oh, in that world whimsical. whimsical. Um, yeah. yeah, lighting is another thing that I think. It does differ now that we're in the CGI world. Mm -hmm. You have it. It's not the same as like regular 2D. You have more, I want to say like shadows and stuff. There is. You can have more like lens flares now. I think they do that a couple of times. There there definitely is. The sun hitting into the camera. It's more realistic. And I think, so you have a lot more depth. It's more realistic. It looks like it's trying to be not, it looks like it's trying to be a live action movie, but it's animated. Yeah. Kind of thing. And the characters don't look too real that it takes you out of it. No. Because um and I think I was reading something about like like if you look at like those Toy Story movies and you see how in at least especially the first one the human beings kind of look like garbage. They're kind of scary <laughs> in the first Toy Story. And it's because you can like tell. I was re- I was listening to this in a different podcast. Someone was talking about. Mm-hmm. I think they were talking about The Incredibles, 
And it's like, you you can tell that a human being, because you know what they look like in your brain, you see them every day, you can tell what looks real and what doesn't. So when it looks so jarringly bad, your brain's like, that's gar- that's that's the worst. Mm. But if it's something like a toy, you don't think of that so much because it's not something that is so ingrained in your memory. Yeah. Or like an animal. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So by not making them look too real, and I mean I think it's it's I guess it's different. Like their point of the Incredibles is that their bodies are all kind of misshapen because they don't want you to think it looks too real, and these characters do look pretty real. But by having like the eyes be t- really big, it's not trying too hard to look like a real human being, so it's not as jarring when it doesn't. Yeah, I think the the designs work really well within the world. Mm-hmm. Like. It's it's kind of the same idea as the backgrounds looking really realistic, but having something about them ground themselves as being in, like, a Disney movie. The characters also, like, they look like people, but their eyes are really big, and it's clear that they're animated. Yeah. So I think it, they they lend themselves really well to each other. And again, I, I was talking to you before about how I don't like it if the backgrounds look too real. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, I'm like, I just don't like how the humans don't look real enough, but, like, the backgrounds look too real. It's just jarring to me. It mm-hmm. feels like they don't belong there. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that this movie does that. I feel like it's, like, the rocks don't really look like real rocks. But they they look good. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, lighting is something that I think is interesting when you get into CGI. Because it's... It's just you have a lot more room to be invented with it. Yeah. Um, and you have moments that are, like, dramatic and pretty in that sense. Like, the cave scene. Yeah, that seems so simple. Because, I mean, they're in a cave. <laughs> yeah. There's not really that much that they can do with it. But it looks, like, it's really pretty. There's just the, like, uh, the like small underlighting kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it, like, glows almost. It's really interesting. And you have, like, uh, I was talking to you once about the, uh, like, every time Gothel comes back, I feel like, maybe I'm wrong about this, it's really dark mm-hmm. and almost foggy. I think that it, I think... Like, you get that sense when she goes back to the tower, because Rapunzel's missing, and also when she meets her in the woods. Definitely, I know definitely when she goes back to the tower, it's really, like... I know I said nothing was muted, but the t- the tower's almost, like, dusty looking mm-hmm. when she goes back. Yeah. And then, definitely in the woods, there's, like, sm- like fog and, like, yeah. spookiness. <laughs> so there's a lot of just... green lighting around her, too. She has, like, the lantern. That, uh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Like green, lantern. green is evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's always good. Her mm-hmm. character does have, like, elements that are very sort of evil. But they're not overdone. No, yeah, you don't get you don't get like annoyed by it. Yeah. Um, shots are another thing that I think this movie does really interesting. Well, yeah. Interesting more as compared to like other it almost feels like it's pretty cinematic. I think it is. Like uh I have a couple of them written down that I like. I like uh when her hair comes out of the tower. Yeah. The I um like that. There's a couple times that happens. One where it's like a down, you looking up, and it falls straight down mm-hmm. towards you. And then another one when she's sort of just looking out and her hair is blowing in the wind. Yeah, that's near the beginning. Yeah. Those are both done really well. Yep. You have that one twirl scene during Kingdom Dance. Oh, which, oh we'll God. talk about Kingdom Dance later on because we love that that song. But um, <laughs> every time I see that shot where he like turns and like flips his hair back and she like also kind of spins yeah i'm like that's a nice shot (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) i'm always like (sighs) i love that shot kingdom dance in general it's just i all the shots in that they just like they mold so well together it just flows so good use of montage yeah um another one is the wide pan over the bridge oh my god i love that shot so much yeah if you don't know i mean We'll explain it, I guess. It's when he's um he's on Max. Max like he's, saves him from prison. Yeah, and he's he's going over the bridge, 
It's right after he says, let's see how fast. Okay, Max, let's see, <laughs> see how, how fast, fast you can run. run. And then he, like, zooms, and then he's going over the bridge, and it, like, the camera's facing them, and then it, like, meets them in the middle of the bridge, and then, pa- like, yeah, like, pans aggressively to the, to the right. Yeah, to the right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, like, pans aggressively as he, like, zooms down into the into the woods or whatever yeah and it's it's really cool the speed of it works i don't know it's really cool <laughs> go watch that scene if you don't know what we're talking everything about. in that too like the scene when he actually gets to the tower and yeah. jumps off and it's like looking up he jumps off i think it's slightly um sorry. dutch angle yeah it's it's a slight <laughs> dutch angle a dutch I angle for those of you who don't know it's an angle that is tilted yeah it's just the side of it it makes you feel uneasy it's used a lot of Dutch things. angles are the kind of shots that you see and you're like, ah, Dutch angle. But in that <laughs> shot, I think it's really subtle. Yeah. And it's looking up mm-hmm. and it looks really cool. It's for like a split second too. He like lands. It's really cool. And then the scene where um, he cuts her hair and you get the vertigo shot. Yeah. Vertigo shots. For those of you who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> These are all very film school terms. Yeah. And we're sorry we're bringing them up. But they're cool. They are. Um. It's the Jaws thing. That's the thing yeah, people know yeah. about. It's, it's well, one it's called the Vertigo shot. Well, no, but like people know it the most from Jaws, I think. I mean, I guess so. It's yeah. basically when you... The actual technical thing is like you zoom in while you dolly out. Or the opposite or the of that. Opposite. We're not sure. <laughs> one of the two. A zolly shot. Um, and basically what it gives the effect of is like the background moving out, but the character stays still. Mm-hmm. It pretty much makes it's it's like the world around you is like moving and yeah, but but you're but it's focusing on one person. I don't know. And it's like, what is the purpose of that in that shot? I think it is. I mean, it's it's Gothel's world crumbling down around yeah, her. <laughs> like it's her realization that like, oh, yeah, we are done. So done. Catch me being Infinity Ward away. Yeah. <laughs> Pascal just trips her. <laughs> Pascal's, Pascal's like, a murder. No, he's not. <laughs> no, Pascal's like. Uh, it's interesting he just, that they do he just that. Does though. the final blow? Yeah, that's an interesting. So not take what you will from that, but he is the <laughs> one who kind of kills her. Yeah. Ish. I mean, she probably would have just faded to dust anyways. You but, could also But then say we get that, that weird like, like yeah. her falling, yeah. which is also an interesting lighting thing because you have like the sun peeking out from the uh, the clouds. It's very cloudy, but then you have just like the the one like beam the of one sun. Beam. Yeah, it's uh, maybe a a metaphor for the light. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See in the light. <laughs> um, more like, you know, now darkness is going away. The so light's taking over again. Another thing to talk about, we're, we we hit on it a little bit before, is the uh, the lantern scene. Oh, yeah. John Ripa, Ripa, however you want to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. He's a story artist. Uh, he brought the idea to John Lasseter to replace the idea of fireworks going off. Because it originally was fireworks. What a good decision And he was like, that. let's make it lanterns. Yeah. And I think that's a good idea because fireworks are A, too loud. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> and at last I said... <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't think you can have an intimate moment with, with that. Fireworks are loud. Another thing with the fireworks, it would be harder to be like, for Mother Gothel to be like, they're just stars. Yeah. If she's like, I want to go see the exploding things <laughs> that happen every year on my birthday and Mother Gothel would be like... Mm. <laughs> it's It's a... It's a supernova exploding. Yeah, it's, super, it's just a planet exploding. <laughs> Don't worry. Calm about yourself. It. It's fine. I mean, they probably would have written it differently in that case, but probably. I just think the lanterns are so much more romantic. <laughs> I think it's also like that's a very beautiful scene, and you have what was it, like forty five thousand lanterns. It's a it's a good thing to have. It's also that connection with her parents when the lantern comes and she sort of touches it. Yeah, she touches the one that they launched off. And it's her she kind like of being connected to this thing that is basically meant for her. I just think it's a lot more personal. Mm-hmm. And it's it's nice that he brings lanterns for them to... Yeah. It's just so don't cute. Don't know where he was keeping it. I don't know. <laughs> but it was nice. I don't know. But yeah, it's just... I just think it's a lot more personal. And also, it's not 
can't think of another lantern scene in a movie. <laughs> That's true. It's Oh, I can think of a lantern scene in a movie. Oh god. To all the boys no. that freaking loved <laughs> PS I love you. I hate that movie. <laughs> I I didn't watch it. And I don't want to. I mean, it's interesting because and when you look at those kind of things in real life, I feel like they don't look as cool. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Like, if you go to, like, a real one, but, like, that one in the movie was, like, because they were so big. Mm. We wanted to go to a lantern festival. Yeah, we, if there wasn't corona, we might actually have gone to one. We actually probably would have. Yeah. Because the reason we didn't go was, the reason we didn't actually buy the tickets, because I wasn't sure if I was going to still be here. Yeah. But now that I, I did decide to stay... We probably would have gone. Yeah, we probably would have if it wasn't for corona. But then it got canceled because of the virus. Yeah. So. And it's not. It's in the U.S. So we would have. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to get there. Yeah. But anyways. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> next year. Go. Maybe next year. It sounds like a lot of fun. It like does. they have, They have kind of. Um, it's so cute. Yeah, it is really good. Anyways. I just think it's it's it was a very original thing to do in a movie. I hadn't seen a movie That's with true. the lantern scene. And it just stands out so yeah, much. I think if really anyone good. talks about Lantern Scene, you think of Tangled and you think of I See the Light. Yeah, I guess it is kind of a cultural thing, though. Mm-hmm. Like, it was a, was it from Thailand? Was that where it I originated? So. Something like that. So I'm sure if you more so either lived there or were familiar with that culture, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. Mm-hmm. But for us, here yeah, in for our us, we're like that dumb little Western culture, <laughs> yeah. we we're don't like, know what do that, that is. That. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, it's just really beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it is very romantic. Yeah, it's romantic. And then also the cinematography, the lighting. Like, all of the lanterns, like, reflecting onto the water. Yeah. It just, like, illuminates everything. It just looks so it's pretty. It's just a pretty scene. It is. So, yeah. That's all really good. I yeah. don't know if you want to touch on costumes. Is that yeah, visual? Sure. I mean, yeah. You look at the costumes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, costumes are a visual thing. That is true. I think they had plans before to make Rapunzel's dress green, hmm. but went with it. Was it pink or purple? I think I think it's purple. I think or it's more it's purple. Pink. Purple is a royal color, although <laughs> I think royal purple is more <laughs> royal. It's royal. But you do get the sense of like somewhat of a connection with mm. royalty with her. Yeah. And also just like very light. It's more of a contrast between that and like Gothel's dark red. I also, I really like Gothel's outfit, too. It's yeah. not, like, bright. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, like, dark. Yeah, it's, like... <laughs> <laughs> that was genius. <laughs> no, but, like, it is, like, a... It's, like, a... It's which goes like along a... with her dark nature. Yeah. If they made, like, a, a bright red... Yeah, <laughs> be, like, blood! Yeah. I don't know. I just think it works really well. I like she Eugene's nice. outfit. I really like That Eugene's vest outfit. combo with yeah. the, the shirt. Yeah. And again, like I was saying, with his belt thing, I'm telling you, movies <laughs> don't ever show that people have a place to carry their money. He has a satchel. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's revolutionary. <laughs> the fact that he has something to hold his money, which he does have money. Yeah, he, he does. He spends it we on her. We see him, like, uh, picking it out and buying baguettes <laughs> and cheese i think <laughs> and uh, we don't know what it is we I think, think it's, it's cheese, cheese but it looks really weird anyways yeah, it he doesn't buys, matter anyways he also he gets a it. boat somehow and we have a theory that he i don't rent, think he's i don't think he stole the boat i feel like he probably rented a boat he rented a boat <laughs> he rented a boat <laughs> notorious criminal flynn rider Who rents a boat <laughs> where do you rent a boat from there i don't know maybe they just had boats. when did he get the time i don't know he man. was like hey babe go <laughs> you gotta go to the bathroom go to the bathroom for a bit i'll be right i'll be back <laughs> he runs he's like i need a boat i need a boat stat you gotta get me and two lanterns boat two lanterns and a bunch of apples um, oh, yeah, he also buys the apples most of them. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a that's it's just a nice little element to show us he's got he's got the money. Yeah. Um, I also like his boots. Yeah. He always wear boot wears boots. Yeah, I like the boots. In the series, he never doesn't wear boots. So even at his wedding, yeah. he's wearing riding <laughs> boots. Yeah. So yeah, the costumes are all pretty good. Mm. There's not really much to say about them. Do you want to cap that off there? I think that's pretty good. Okay, so what do you want to give it as a final grade, a final score? I said, did I say nine initially? Yeah, I'll keep it at a nine. I really like the visuals of the movie. 
I, I mean, I'll stick at an 8.5, just because I, I mean, there's nothing so, I mean, the lantern scene is pretty amazing. <laughs> That's a pretty good score. Yeah. So, okay. we'll go 8.5 and 9, which is more math than 17.5. Okay. Okay, so moving on to round four, editing enumeration, my least favoritely named category. <laughs> Judging based on editing, music, and sound design. Well, we, we'll be touching on the music a lot in this. Because, yeah. Um, I think, again, we were talking about how editing is difficult to judge for um, animation. animation. I mean, I guess, how is it really that different from live action? But everything is very deliberate in animation. Yeah. Everything that you see is specifically put there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And editing really in general is hard to tell if it is good or not. Because if you're an editor, I think you can really understand that. And you can see the motivations for it. But if not, it's really hard to really understand that. Yeah. But I think it has a good flow, a good compression of time and good music. So I give it an initial eight. Yeah, I'll start off with an A2. I agree with that. So, the flow I was talking about. I mean, scene to scene, it's good, it's fine. The montage and the kingdom dance. I think that is a good compression of time. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think the ways in which they kind of move from, like, uh, the dancing to whatever. All the other little things. The uh, drawing on the the sidewalk to the like book the library yeah the library thing. them reading and stuff it's all yeah. really good it's a good compression of time thing there it also is a compression of time that doesn't really like it's not trying to do too much it's just kind of trying to show them having a good time mm-hmm. <laughs> some compressions try to like do a lot mm-hmm. and show that a ton happened mm-hmm. but they're really just showing that they're having a good time and that she is like connecting with these people that's really it so, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can say about that. Mm-hmm. But um, music, do you want to go to music? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so, Alan Menken did the, st- the score for this and wrote all the songs, along with, I think, Glenn Slater did the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Alan Menken. I love. <laughs> yeah, we love Alan Menken. Mm-hmm. We have, he, uh, he has quite a history with Disney. He was the one who was working with Howard Ashman when they became partners doing the disney renaissance movies so doing like little mermaid and beating the beast and then mm, aladdin i think it was and so they worked together on that they really were the ones who were responsible for like reviving disney he he's done like most of the music that's like really great in disney movies he has a good he has a good repertoire (laughs) (laughs) yeah he's won probably multiple oscars i don't remember but i'm sure i think i do remember it was like a good amount. Yeah. Um, talking about music for this movie, though, what are your thoughts on that? I love the songs in, the, in, the, in it. Yeah. They're not like... They're not like top-tier Disney yeah. songs. I really like I, I See the Light. Yeah. That's my favorite. But the yeah. rest of them are... I really like When Will My Life Begin. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably my second favorite. Mother Knows Best is pretty cool. I like the reprise of Mother Knows Best. That's a really good song. <laughs> I like the reprise of When Will My Life Begin. I also like that one too, yeah. One of my I'm least. a reprise fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're always good. Yeah. They always are really like the the ones that pop. Yeah. But I I think compared to other Alan Macon work, there's more iconic songs mm-hmm. in other movies. But I really enjoy the Tangled songs. Yeah, and the score is also pretty good. He said it was like a folk rock type score. Mm-hmm. So, which again, I was like, I don't know if I can hear that a lot, but there are, I guess, little elements of like guitar, acoustic guitar kind of stuff that you really do see. The songs are good. <laughs> they're not top tier Alan Menken good. But I mean, but, uh, it's still Alan Menken. Yeah, but they're still really good. <laughs> yeah, and I think the score does work really well. Yeah, the score I listen to. <laughs> like, you were talking about how you can listen to the score and you can imagine the scene. Yeah, that's kind of, that's my personal definition of if I think it's a good score, is if I can, like, listen to the score again. Because mm-hmm. I have, this is just me, I have a homework playlist that's just scores. <laughs> yeah, I do that um, sometimes. And when I, my, when I think it's a good score, it's like, I can listen to it and I can imagine the scene mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And I can definitely do that with Tangled. 
Yeah. There's a couple other movies that I can do that with, definitely, but... Yeah, it's a good way of, like, knowing that then the music does really elevate the scene. Mm-hmm. It also makes it feel epic. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them, like, the score just, like, makes it feel really cool. <laughs> do you have any moments in the movie that you feel like the score is really um, up there? I think in the, uh, the dam, the score is actually really... Okay, let me think about that scene. <laughs> you probably can't think of what the score is in the, at that point. But it's really, like, <laughs> you just stare. <laughs> Do you want to listen to it? No, I'm thinking about it. Okay. I can remember the okay. stuff. Okay. I've seen this movie, like, 80 times. I, know you have. I think it's, like, it's just, like, Yeah, like, like really when the like dam epics. is breaking. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, like, running. Mm-hmm. It sounds really cool. <laughs> I also like the scene where the, uh, the... The uh, when he goes to the tower, like we were talking about that that yeah. wide pan, mm-hmm. they're like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking. Du, 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 du. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's very. It's really epic. It's very that uh, big. It's really like, yeah, it's big. It's dramatic, but not too dramatic. It's just really nice. I think it it works with the story really well. I mean, there's no elements of like character themes i don't think yeah i don't or like don't light so. motifs but um which which could be interesting if they had done that but i don't think alan Menken does that very often and maybe mm-hmm. there are and we're just dumb and we haven't listened to it enough <laughs> maybe <laughs> but um yeah i mean it's, it's it's just we love alan Menken, so it's pretty good so yeah i think if we're talking about just like good compression of time again i said the movie flows well so it must be, like, a decently edited thing where we don't have too much bothering us. Mm-hmm. Nothing really distracting. I would argue, again, if we're talking about music, that, like, the um the series is better with it. I, yeah, I personally like the series songs better than, than, than the movie. I mean, there are more. There are more, but I think there's more, like, really good ones. <laughs> yeah. But it's all very good. Yeah. So do you want to cap that off there? Yeah, I think that's good. I think I would stick with an 8. Yeah, I'll, g- yeah, I'll give it an 8 too. Okay, so yeah. with that, that gives us a 16 out of 20. Okay. Okay, round 5. Societal sum, judging based on impact the film has on the industry or on society as a whole. Now this, this is where it gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> because this movie had a big impact with the literal program they had to make to do the hair (laughs) yeah which is still used even if it's been updated Mm -hmm. it's still a thing and i guarantee that a lot of animated movies that are done today would maybe be different or would have to have created a software to be able to do what they do now you think elsa's hair is sitting there coming out of out of that 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 braid what is it (laughs) And let it go when she yeah. comes down. Or whatever. Frozen 2, her hair looks pretty good. You yeah. think that's happening without this software? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> They'd have to make a different... They would have to make a software. They'd have to do the Tangled budget to make the software if Tangled didn't yeah. do it. I mean, Rapunzel's hair is beautiful, but also Eugene's hair is beautiful, so... Yeah. <laughs> the swoop. Oh, my God. So, I mean, like, it, it is... It was sort of groundbreaking in that sense. And it was sort of the beginning of the CGI craze. Mm-hmm. So, not that it's the first movie to use CGI. Definitely not. But but it's like, now all these Disney princess movies, you've frozen the Moana, they're all the same. They all look like this. So you have it sort of being that turning point. And it is sort of the rising of the Disney revival era. Because you have the Renaissance era sort of ending with, um, I don't remember what it was, but I think it was like Tarzan ended all of that. I think that sounds like it's right. not a Disney yeah. princess movie, but after that, they kind of stopped. And then you have Princess and the Frog being the first movie of the revival era, but Tangled really being the thing that like elevated it. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have Tangled, I'd argue you might not have Frozen. Yeah, or it would look a lot different. Yeah, um, yeah, it would be a lot or different have a than lot the movie. Of larger budget to be able to make it. Yeah, sure. It sort of changed the look of animated Disney movies. 
and animated movies in general. Yeah. Did we want to give it an initial score before we continue? Yeah. <laughs> I said 7.5. Yeah, I, I would agree with 7.5 as initial. Just because, like, yeah, the hair and, like, the program did a lot. Uh-huh. But other than that, it's a very, like, weirdly niche movie. <laughs> where, like, That's I... true. Like, my friends personally um, love Tangled. Mm-hmm. And I think all of us agree that we think it's the best Disney movie mm-hmm. or like Disney princess movie. Um, but other than that, like there's not that many like people that have a lot of love for the movie. They just kind of like, yeah, it's good. Yeah. But then they're like, but we love Frozen <laughs> or they don't. They or pretend they just... like they don't like Frozen because they think it's lame. <laughs> and they're like, we don't like Disney princess movies. But yeah. anyways, it, it just has a weird niche of like people think it's good but not that many people are crazy about it and don't celebrate how good yeah. the like but there are people who are crazy there about are it, i guess but definitely not as much <laughs> yeah that's true um and then also we said like it has a series yeah so it was good enough to spawn a series and it's interesting because the series a hundred percent does not cater to a new audience oh really yeah. it was made what eight years after seven, seven? 2017 it yeah. premiered it was made seven years after it after the movie came out yeah so which means it for it's i feel like it's really for the people like us that were re- that were like younger when we watched the first mm-hmm. tangled and still love it and wanted more <laughs> and i think it does a good job of being good for sort of adults as well i mean it's not like an adult thing no there there's some some hints but (laughs) but it's really funny it's really funny like (laughs) like the voice work is just it's just like it's comedy gold (laughs) yeah zachary levi zachary levi we love you (laughs) um and so it's definitely for fans and doesn't really um try to hide that yeah it does everything for the fans yeah they know what the fans want and for the most part they give them that and that was a thing we were talking about It doesn't do anything for the money. Mm -hmm. Like, it's definitely... It wasn't made just to make money. It wasn't like a Frozen 2. Well, and also, like, it definitely wasn't made to make money because Disney never promoted the show. Yeah, you might be surprised to even hear that it exists. Yeah. (laughs) But it does. It's on Disney+. Plus. I think everyone should go watch it. Except for season 3 because they took it off for some dumb reason. Did they not put it back? I don't know. Let me check. They might have put it back. But still, go watch it. You also have to watch the, like, um... They also have a little movie. Yeah, you have to watch the movie before. Tangled Before Ever After. Which no one knows they have to do that. Some people are confused when you start the series. Are they? Yeah, I feel like. Um, so yeah, it has like the series that is made for fans that Disney never promotes. And mm-hmm. so it's not like a Frozen 2 because if they wanted to make something for money, they would make a movie. Yeah, it definitely wasn't done for money. They were just kind of like, we can do more with these characters. There's a lot of stuff that is unanswered that yeah. we can explore and that's they another did. <laughs> thing like you have questions when you're finished with tangled yeah it's like you have her now living in this castle which is essentially like another tower mm-hmm. in some ways she's not being abused or anything no but she's never really had the chance to like live a free life of adventure well and like she's never had to do anything <laughs> like and now she's suddenly a princess <laughs> yeah <So laughs> like she that has whole to, like thing. adjust to all of that and so you wonder yeah. like what's this dynamic how much does she actually know about the world you have a lot of questions about her yeah so it works and a lot of questions about eugene <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean we were talking about frozen 2 being kind of garbage yeah and saying like maybe it would have worked better as a series yeah because the problem with frozen 2 is that they try to say too much and in one movie saying nothing at and all. then end up saying nothing but i feel like that could be fixed by just picking one thing like the movie could have been better if they wanted to do a movie to just pick one kind of theme and go with it but if they wanted to keep the movie as it is it would have worked better probably as a tv show yeah. because tv shows you can have a bigger arc because it's longer mm-hmm. and you can focus on individual themes within individual episodes mm-hmm. so it works better to have a more complicated storyline because you can focus on it in different ways in different episodes yeah so. and tangled the series also goes on to show like her relationship with like another girl mm-hmm. with the character of cassandra mm-hmm. 
that's an interesting thing. You have all these dynamic relationships. Riverian, who is our fan favorite. Yeah, everybody But also loves it's their... Jeremy Jordan, so we love Jeremy Jordan. Yeah, maybe it's just Jeremy Jordan, but... Oh, I'll talk about awards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was nominated for Best Song for I See the Light mm-hmm. at the Oscars, but lost to We Belong Together from Toy Story. Which I think is sad. Which makes us sad because we don't like that song. No. <laughs> It's more so like a, I don't remember that song. No. So why? I don't remember it at all. And I mean, I see the light is so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, it got snubbed. It didn't yeah, even get nominated. For best animated. Yeah. It's interesting to look at that though because they only had three nominations. Mm-hmm. So it was like, uh, Toy Story three, which won, How to Train Your Dragon, which mm-hmm. is fine, and then something else. Yeah. <laughs> which I don't remember. But like three. Yeah, that's not that many. <laughs> they definitely could have put Tangled in, in there. In a world where, like, the boss baby... <laughs> oh my didn't god. that get nominated? Did it? Oh my god. I don't know. I think it did. I'm gonna look it up. Oh my god. Like, in a world where something like the boss baby can get nominated <laughs> for an Oscar and Tangled doesn't... It's pretty sad. Yeah. Like, what is this garbage? That is... Nominated for one Oscar! What the heck? <laughs> Best animated feature freaking film... Okay, that makes me mad. <laughs> yeah, see? All these snubs. Yeah. So, Tangled didn't win anything. Which is not fair. It's not fair. Anyways, I think that's why... Not not the Oscar thing. But, like, it's just... It's a movie that's loved by its fans. Yeah, I think it has a but, niche audience. But, like, other than that, no one really recognizes it. And it kind of get Not forgotten. Definitely not forgotten. Yeah, like, people know what it is. But people don't really care about it very much. For some mm-hmm. reason. And I mean, that's also seen in Disneyland, where they don't have anything Tangled related, they really. Have a bathroom. <laughs> that's the <laughs> ba- But having a Tangled-themed bathroom is, like, the saddest thing to do. It is really <laughs> interesting. They could have a Snuggly Duckling, and it could be amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. If they did a Snuggly Duckling in Disneyland, that would be amazing. I mean, it's this closed right now, right? This is coming from someone right? who's never been to Disneyland. Oh, we gotta go. But, um... I the th- the thought that there's nothing in Disneyland other than a bathroom that's Tangled related is really sad. <laughs> and I don't know if that one's in ta- in Disneyland or Disney World. It's probably Disney World. Yeah. Anyways, it's not um it's yeah. not really like represented very much. Yeah. Disney doesn't care about it very much for some reason. Yeah, but they do have the characters there. Well, yeah. But that's it. I have seen a Tangled float. Wow. <laughs> So, That's it. yeah, I don't know. It could be more, but I think they're opening a tangled thing in Tokyo. In Tokyo, I think I saw. That's something. far. Well, I'm just saying they're doing something. Tokyo's the only one. Tokyo's that care. the progressive. <laughs> yeah. Disneyland. I might be wrong about this. Okay, I yeah. think something. But I, I do. I know what she's talking about. I have heard that too. But, uh, so I mean, it does have a niche audience, I think, which is interesting because you'd wonder if it didn't, if people would be mad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. when you have niche audiences, people are mad that it's not big, but also they like the fact that they have their little group of people. I kind of like the fact that it's smaller because I don't think the series would have been a thing if it was bigger. If it was bigger, they would have made a second movie. That's true. And so. it they probably wouldn't have... They, it probably would have been something completely different than the series is. Mm-hmm. Because the series had a long arc that wouldn't have made any sense. You could not have done that. Yeah. In, in, what they did with the series, you could not have done in a movie. That's true. That would have been terrible. So Yeah, because it's really, I mean, it's long. Yeah. And you have too many characters. Too many characters. Telling There's you, like, yeah. If you did that, you'd have like a, you'd have a, the, the problem on your hand that you have with like Frozen and Frozen 2 introduces useless characters too. Yeah. Um, but by having them episodic, it's like they can focus on different ones at different times and then mm-hmm. leave them completely out of other ones. Yeah. So, yeah, of all those things, the most important is probably the fact that it just changed the way that these Disney movies are made, mm. but didn't get as much recognition. Yeah. What do you, what do you want to give as a final score for that? Um, I think I'd stick at a 7.5. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Cause yeah, it, it did a lot, but it also didn't at the same time. Yeah. So... Yeah, that gives us a 15 out of 20 for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so that brings us to the bonus best round. Yay! So a film can get bonus points 
If we agree on it being the best film in each category presented, it can win up to three bonus points. Are you ready? I'm ready. First one. Best hair in a Disney movie. Okay. Contenders. Other contenders include Frozen 2. <laughs> God. <laughs> what? Including Elsa's uh, blonde locks. Luscious flowing hair. And Kristoff's garbage slicked <laughs> back hair. Which is truly the worst thing I've seen in my life. <laughs> it makes me want to throw up. <laughs> I hate it so much. Okay, His can- hair's fine. <laughs> you can't see. You can't go on. I have to say something. Okay, I'll wait. We have to wait. His hair is fine at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, for the, for the entire movie, his hair's perfectly fine. Yeah. But then they show him at the end of the movie, and he has it slicked back, and it looks like he walked through, like, it looks like he's been walking around and hasn't showered in, like, two weeks and it's just slick back and he was like i'll just put some gel in it it'll fix it it looks so bad i think long slicked back hair is never a good idea if you're gonna have long hair like that it's Let gotta it be fluffy yeah and it's gotta have some layers even if it's slicked back why is it shiny it yeah. just like if anything's shiny and slicked back it looks like you're greasy don't know why they decided that's anyways a good idea. <laughs> we'll continue okay second contender yeah. brave okay uh, with including Merida's frizzy hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Red. <laughs> frizzy. Yep. Yeah. It's poof. It's poof. Um, and then contender number three is Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, the Beast had some he fur did. that was really rocking it. Like uh-huh. I said, dark brown. Uh-huh. Um... <laughs> And then though he's like blonde. Is it like blonde though? Yeah. Anyways. But, anyways, but it's still flowing. That hair is also like Yeah. So like a Fabio kind of Yeah. So yeah, those are the contenders. Thing is two hundred and sixty million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> well and also like Frozen Two, the hair looks really good, excluding the slick back hair. Like her hair does look really good. Yep. But it's because of the program that Tangled make <laughs> made. So I feel That's like true. So I feel like you like sure that hair might technically be better mm-hmm. and look better. Well it doesn't. I just put that in there because I know I know <laughs> one person who was like, I like that hair and I was like, <laughs> Guess it's a contender. Well, I just think I think that the hair does I mean, it looks really impressive. Yeah. In Tang in not Tangled. In Frozen too. It looks really impressive. Minus sure. the slick back hair. But that's because of the program that was created for Tangled. So I think because of that by default, Tangled has to win. <laughs> I guess so. You don't I mean, even want to have an argument for Brave or Beauty and the Beast. I mean Brave again Brave was af- was Brave after No. No? I don't know. Hold Who on. cares? I mean like <laughs> That I think movie is like a blip on the radar of I mean it is. I'm just wasn't it twenty twelve? I want to say that's right. Um, 2012, yeah. So it was after Tangled again. Mm-hmm. So it's again probably using the same program. Yeah. And Beauty and the Beast, the hair looks good, but it's not as flowy as Eugene's. <laughs> yeah, we're not even comparing <laughs> it to Rapunzel. <laughs> I, I mean, her hair looks really good. Yeah. But I mean, going by like, his hair's like an example of normal, like just normal that's hair. That's true, and it's really nice. And it looks really nice. So, yeah, I think we're probably going to have to give it to it. Yeah. Okay, that's one bonus point. Yeah. Um, Round number two for this. Best Disney prints. Okay. Contenders include Aladdin, Shang, mm-hmm. and Naveen. Mm-hmm. You can make an argument for Eric, but I won't take it because he's boring. He doesn't do anything. That's true. I know that there's huge love for Eric, but, like, what does he do? That's true. Absolutely nothing. You can make an argument for Kristoff. He just Christoph. drowns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see we're still talking about Eric. I'm just saying. He almost he drowns. Just drowns. He just drowns. And then is a baby. And then it's like, who's that woman? <laughs> it's like I heard a voice. And that's it. That's all he does. That's Anyways. True. Um, you can make an argument for Kristoff. But I'd argue that because of his useless nature in the second movie, that I just don't care. He also, even in the first one, like, he's important. But, like, it's nothing crazy that he does. He just kind of helps Anna, like, walk up a mountain. Mm-hmm. And then he helps her get down the mountain. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, damn, I gotta save her. That's really all he does. Yeah. It's nothing, like, crazy. Yeah. Eh. 
Um, let's... Aladdin. Oh yeah, Aladdin's I think the... Aladdin's different because he's the protagonist though. Yeah. So you have a lot more to think about with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I here here's the thing. I like all of the contenders. Yep. Like they're all really solid characters. Yep. And I like all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that Eugene has the most charm. Yeah, he's and just the most interesting. <laughs> he's the most interesting. He has the most charm. Um, he's also a big part of the movie. Yeah, which I know you can say the same for Aladdin. And I guess you could say the, main the Beast character. is also a prince. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That we should care about. I mean, yeah, but... Uh, but he's also... That movie is really about him. It is. You could say it's about Belle, but she doesn't really change or anything. Yeah, he's really the only one who changes. Yeah, it's a flat arc. He's also kind of, like, not the greatest. I'm not a big That's beast true. fan. That's true, he is, like, kind he's of... He's kind of an asshole at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> and he still kind of low-key is at the end of the movie. Like, That's not true. really, but, like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Eugene is just, he's funny, he's charming, he's the whole package, really. He really is. And, I mean, I know, that, um, like, Shang, Yeah, he's really good, too. But there's not that much shown about who he is, really. That's true. I really like him. I guess, really, what we're saying is they didn't have a hot man meeting for, for people nothing. to come up here and try and tell us that Kristoff is the best <laughs> Disney prince. Yeah. So, yeah. what are your thoughts? Do you think we should just give it to him? I, I, think, I think it has to go to him. Yeah. I think that the other contenders are really good. Yeah. But I just think either the other contenders don't have enough backstory and enough that you learn about them for it to beat it out. Mm-hmm. Or they just aren't as interesting. Yeah. So. So, yeah. Let's let's say that it's going to get that. That's the second bonus point. Yeah. Uh, Final, final bonus point round. Uh, I have best sacrificial death in a Disney movie. Okay. Other contenders are Frozen. Mm-hmm. With Anna, who doesn't die, but um, she turns freezes. into ice. <laughs> I have Wreck It Ralph, mm-hmm. who also like doesn't die. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking back about these. <laughs> <laughs> they don't die. Uh, Big Hero Six. I mean, they technically die. He yeah, di- I he, mean, he dies. He He's dies. not really alive though. <laughs> <laughs> he dies. So, uh, and then Inside Out. Mm-hmm. Um. So okay, let, let's go through them all. Let's talk about okay, Frozen. Frozen, she doesn't really die, no. and it's sweet that it's it's the sister love that the the that brings her back. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't. I just have a hard time really buying die. that they actually care about each other as sisters. <laughs> the problem is because you don't really see that relationship at all. Yeah, it's just it's really just shown. And at I'm the always end. confused because I'm like, have they talked? Ever? Ever? Like, As children, yeah. No, no, I know, but, like, even when she starts to go into, like, solitude, mm-hmm. did she ever see her? Did she ever come out to eat? I don't think they really talked very much. I think she, like, stayed in her room. <laughs> really. Yeah, so I'm always like, I mean, I know they're sisters, and I know they love each other. I just, I don't get the sense of, like, connection. I'm not as moved by it because I'm not as invested in their relationship. I agree with that. Like, it's sweet, and I like that twist where it's like, oh, it's not Kristoff that unfreezes her or whatever. I like that it's her sister. I just think that it could have been more impactful if it showed before that that Elsa even cared for her. Yeah. (laughs) You know? So... It's sweet and I like it, but I think it could have been executed better just with more character development between the two of them. Um, okay, so I, Wreck It Ralph. I really love Wreck It Ralph. That's a good um, scene. And it's a really good scene and it's really sweet. He's holding the heart. Oh my god, it's so cute. I'm bad <laughs> and that's good. Oh man. But again, he also doesn't die. No, he doesn't die. So. Um, and, but the yeah. element of sacrifice is good. Yeah, I do really like it in that movie. But yeah, he doesn't die. Uh, Big Hero Six. I also really like Big Hero Six. But he he comes back. <laughs> well, Eugene comes back. True. But but Eugene comes back. You have like a grieving moment of her crying. Yeah. And I think that makes it more impactful. And I mean, he does have that too. 
hero has that, but he also has to go back and, like, fix... What did he do? I forget how that movie ends. He, like, rebuilds. I mean, he... he like, I mean, I know how he does that, but, like, you don't have really a... He, the chip was... You don't the have chip him was in holding the his dead no, I know. body. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I know how it ends. Like, I get yeah. that, but, like, you know. Yeah. So, you don't get as much of a, like... And you yeah. don't get as much of, like, a loneliness... Like, Rapunzel is completely alone after he dies. Yeah, he dies, and it's literally, like, just her and Pascal in Whereas, this tower. like, Hero does have all those friends. Yeah, he has all the friends. Yeah. And then I think probably the most, um... Actually, could you, if we're going big here, six, could you also, um, Tadashi? count Tadashi? Because he goes in to save people. But he doesn't he go dying. in to save Hero. Well, yeah. I'm just saying that could also maybe be a contender. I don't think it's as impactful, though. I mean, his brother dies. <laughs> yeah, but like, but he doesn't die for him. Yeah. So I think it's different. I just thought I'd throw that out because technically he does sacrifice himself, kind of. Sure. Yeah. Um, but anyways. Um, and then Inside Out. <sighs> Inside Out gets. <laughs> I think that Inside Out maybe for me would win this. Yeah. Because the thing is, he actually dies. <laughs> yeah, Bing Bong's gone. <laughs> it's so sad. And it's really sad. It's so sad. And he does it because he loves Riley. Yeah. And he's like, oh God, it's really sad. It's really and sad. And they try for a bit, and then he's like, I know what I have to do. And it's interesting how then he is just forgotten. Yeah. And it's kind of like a loss of childhood. So there's like elements to that death. Yeah. So I would say that maybe that one would win it. I, I think I agree with that. Because I think if it wasn't for Inside Out, uh-huh. Tangled might win. Yeah. But because the character, first of all, is actually legit dead and stays dead, yeah. it it it's a lot more impactful. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah. I guess we're not going to give it to it then? Yeah, I think it goes to Inside Out. Okay, so that's giving us two out of three bonus points. Okay. Okay, so capping all that off, we're going to now add all of the scores together, and then we'll give it a final uh, percentage out of 100. So, out of all five rounds added together, Mm -hmm. the final score is... 83.5 out of 100. 83.5 out of 100, which, as a letter grade, is Mm -hmm. A-. minus. That's pretty good. Making it our lowest rated <laughs> episode <laughs> ever. <laughs> okay, so an A minus. That's pretty good considering the fact that we uh we love this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's surprising because I don't think we gave it like way really high marks. I mean, like it was solid eighties throughout most of it. Yeah, maybe a couple nineties going in there. But yeah, do you have any final thoughts on this film? I th- I just think it's a it's a solid film that has been not overlooked but that people kind of forget about and need to rediscover Mm -hmm. because i know when i watched it to begin with i really liked it when i was 10 (laughs) and i watched it in theaters but i never really i i think i i watched it in theaters and then i didn't watch it really again until i was in high school i think yeah and then i rewatched it and i was like what was i doing with my life (laughs) i forgot about this great movie and then i rediscovered it and i came to love it again I think when you get older, you begin to, like, appreciate the romance a bit more. Yeah, I agree like, with that. like, Tenet's a bit young for that. Mm-hmm. You're kind of not really thinking and about... And also, he dies. You don't, like... She holds his body for, like, a minute and a half. I think <laughs> we timed it before. Yeah, I was she kind of just cries over his body It's, for like, a, a long bit. time. <laughs> um, so, as you get a little bit older, you begin to appreciate the, like, the, the like, the, this very romantic movie. Mm-hmm. And if you're really into romance stuff, I can see why it would be your favorite Disney princess movie. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. I just think it's it's a movie that uh, if you haven't seen it in a while, and if you're listening to this. Yeah, um, revisit it. Revisit it because it's one that I think you don't think too much of first watch. And mm-hmm. then if you revisit it, a lot, of, a lot of other things come out and you notice more. Yeah. You could argue it's pretty underrated. Yeah. So... But then again, we we don't really know because it could be more loved than we think it is, and we're just so obsessed with it that we don't realize we can't tell if other people are hearing about it or not. I don't know. It's hard to tell, but I think just overall, it it needs more love. <laughs> I could see it getting a comeback in like ten years. 
I could see it getting a comeback when eventually the live action Tangled comes out. That doesn't and then everyone's there. and then everyone's like, This is terrible. The first one's better. Like the original's better yeah. and then it'll have a comeback. I guarantee you that's gonna happen. Why do we need a live action <laughs> tangled at all? I don't know. I think I heard that they were gonna do something different with it, but even that I'm like <sighs> Why do it at all? But I mean you I can't think... do what they did with Mulan because it's not based on like real events i <laughs> kind guess of so i mean you could go back to the original like grim fairy tale yeah, but that's dark <laughs> and they could do it i guess so i don't know if they would have him named like flynn rider yeah he gets like blinded or something yeah i don't know. like thorns blind him and then she heals him with his, her tears yeah. and that's where the original tear thing came from yeah all in all yeah i think everyone should rewatch this movie because we love it yep <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you think that's it? I think that's it. All right. With all that being said, be sure to follow us on Instagram at CineDarkGrade or on Twitter at CineGrade to keep up with what films we review next. Feel free to send us suggestions on Instagram or email us at CineGradePodcast at gmail.com. Let us know how you feel about the film. Send us your own grade and give us any thoughts that you had. If you disagree about anything, feel free to tell us about that too. We're always interested in having conversations about film. Also, be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. It really helps us to get more exposure so that we can really be seen amongst all the other podcasts out there. Uh, we would like to be a little bit more popular, although we are just starting out. So, I don't know. <laughs> but you if know? you like us, give us a good rating. <laughs> yeah, we, we would like to be uh, more reachable. Mm-hmm. Where can they reach you? Um, you can reach me on Instagram at Elsha Kerr. It's all lowercase. It's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys can also find me on Instagram at underscore Chelsea Mitchell underscore. If you want to keep up with us personally or ask us any questions, never hesitate to reach out. I mean, I think that's it for this week. I'm Chelsea Mitchell. I'm Elsha Kirk. And we'll see you next time on Centigrade.